Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming. We've got a lot of visitors tonight. Appreciate that. Hopefully, it will enlighten you tonight. Um, tonight's our work session as we prepare for our first of May uh, board meeting. Um, next week, Ms. Maloof, uh, you will have the invitation. The colors will be presented by the Winder Barrow High School Junior ROTC. We'll approve the minutes. Um, we'll approve the agenda. We'll look at some committee reports, uh, the Clean School Committee. We have Mr. Kane, Ms. Maloof, and Mr. Raper on that this month. Uh, also, I guess we won't have the uh, Teacher of the Year yet, but uh, we're working on that as great, great teachers to recognize. Um, Dr. McMichael will have some superintendent recognitions. The Georgia Student Technology Competition winner and the Governor's Honors Program for 2022 finalists. We may or may not have some visitors, and we may have some requests to appear before the board. Let's see. We're going to start off tonight with the Superintendent's Department reports. Uh, Dr. Green? Yes, I um, have the communications report uh, there for you to review, and also the 140th day of school student enrollment report is also there for you to review. I will take the time to go over those. You can review them on your own, but if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you, sir. Ms. Houston. First, we'll go over the invoices paid between 2000 and 24999 And um, the first one is Heineman. It's paid out of consolidated funds. $13,166.48, and that was for books for the classroom library at Bethlehem Elementary School. Um, the next one is Douglas Equipment, paid out of school food nutrition funds, $15,781, and that's for a steamer at BASA. And then the last one is Imagine Learning from Title III funds, and that is for English uh, Learners Learning Platform district wide. And I think um, Mr. King. He is going to go into a little bit more detail about that later on tonight. Um, the next thing I wanted to go over was just that we received our audit back for fiscal year 2021. And um, there were, this is the good, good, good report here from the George DOE. This, that second to the last paragraph has been determined that the review of your audit report for the year ended June 30th, 2021. There are no findings and or questions, costs. So we had a great, clean audit. Um, the primary person on this is our audit and um, accounting and audit coordinator, Pam McNamara, she's out there. But this is um, everybody from our principals, our bookkeepers, our finance department, our directors, our superintendent, our board. That's what makes this happen. And we're really proud of another clean uh, report for this year. Absolutely. Congratulations Thank on you. that. I know how hard you guys work to get that. Yeah. Ms. Right. Houston, yes. I have a question about the preceding um, information on the cost. Was that steamer an additional steamer or a new steamer? I mean, the steamer went out. Is that correct, Greg? Do you remember about that one? I think the steamer went out at Bassa yes. and we had to get a new one and it was not covered by warranty. Okay, that was my question. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. See you in a minute. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to update you on our projects. Our new elementary school. <clears throat> We've got uh, some concrete that's been poured out there. Even the blue areas there, those now have concrete over them. And I think we're on a on a weekly basis now. Um, so Friday there will be another four, and uh, we hope to have the foundations done here very soon. And then these subsequent four, four will continue to take place. And then um, there's a little piece of steel right out there and uh, start going vertical with it. But things are moving along very well out there. Pleased with the progress. And, uh, 
that we're just not aware of sometimes. And tonight, I have the privilege to introduce, uh, I know there's been a lot of chatter, especially around this specific area, the last couple of days about celebrities in, in the area. Um, and so we do have two here tonight, um, two uh, amazingly talented, gifted, and uh, hard work, uh, seventh graders at our Arts Innovation Magnet Program, the writers, producers, and stars <laughs> of the Graham Collins Show, Graham Mole and Collins Show. Good evening. We are the Graham Collins Show. We are high school systems, very own student led podcast. Hello, everyone. My name is Graham Mole, and I am the host of the Graham Collins Show. Both Paul and I have to separate each other in different roles so we can achieve what we need in the small amount of time that we have on the podcast day. I take lead in our post production activities, such as handling our website. I also handle our interviewees, as we call them. My main goal is to connect to the public and allow them an opportunity to learn more about the community leaders. I'm going to go ahead and move on over to the call. Hello, I'm the co host of the Grammar College Show. I myself handle the in interview logistics and editing. I also write and format all questions. Um, writing the questions beforehand helps us with time and leading topics. And even though me and Graham both have this um, guideline that we follow, we love to add side questions based on our interviewees' responses. Um, and when me and Graham are together and put our minds to work, we make an incredible team. And I think that that is the reason where we that is the reason that we are where we are today. Um, winning the uh, audio production category for the seventh and eighth, eighth grade division of the Barrow County School Technology Competition. After that, we just couldn't stop, so we had to move on to the Northeast Regional Technology Competition, where we had also received first place. We then moved on to the State Student Technology Competition, where we received second place in our category division. Today, our main goal is to share with you our experience throughout this journey, what our hardships were, and how it, how it helped us grow individually and as a team, and what the Grand College Show is all about. We will even give you an inside look at what the future of the Grammar College Show will hold. So, what is the Grammar College Show, you may be asking? Well, it's an informative podcast led by two of the very own Barrow High School System students. Our main goal of the podcast is to share the inside lives and day to day tasks of our community leaders. We discuss what they do and why they're beneficial to the Barrow community. We take pride in the Grammar College Show and hope that our listeners find our podcast beneficial. We spend most of our time outside of school working on finding the next interviewee and researching their influence in the community. We look for major details when we research so we can provide correct topic-based questions. Now, on an average interview day, we conduct the meeting with our interviewee during our class free time. We only have an hour and 45 minutes to complete the interview, edit the given episode, publish the episode for our self-made website, and then clean up all of our equipment. So we choose to pace our time precisely to not disturb classroom instruction. One thing that both Graham and I can count on is the support from our very own principal, Ms. Sean Williams. We know, that we, we know that we can go out to her with any idea and almost always get the okay to make it happen. With her support and support from our teachers, we have been able to construct and operate a podcast strictly on our own. We create audio episodes using Soundtrack, also known as a doll. We then use it for, we then upload our episodes to our website. Our website was made by both Colin and I and Google Sites Creation Tool. We used attractive images, eye-catching colors, and exciting wordage. We ensure that our viewers are captivated by our website and want to explore more. Every new season, we change the theme and colors of our website, as of now we have bright blues with matching white text to simulate the spring season. For every new episode, we create a preview into what the episode is all about. We use information from the interview to get little teasers in there. Uh, so that the, our viewers know basically kind of what's happening in that episode. We create a matching title and make a quick link so that they can view the episode from there. At the bottom of our homepage, you can find a Google survey created by us that any listener can complete. It asks for ways that we can improve in our skill and what we do best. It also provides a way for listeners to recommend a new interviewee to our show. This allows us to understand what our listeners are looking for in our podcast. Now, we also provide another way for our listeners to learn more about us and how we met. This is an Hour About Us page. 
Our podcast is thriving, and we have a total of 18 episodes that are set or that are separated into two main categories, them being named first adventure and second adventure. Episodes one through six are in the first adventure, being that we film them in our sixth grade year. Episodes seven through 18 are located in the second adventure category. These are our most recent episodes and the episodes that we are filming currently. You can also find every single episode that we have on one centralized page rather than viewing each episode separately in each category. The Grammar College Show is starting with the very first Barrow County Student Technology Competition. We were tasked to, with creating an innovative technology project, and that's just what we did. We got together and filmed the first episode of the Grammar College Show, submitted it, and we received second place. Now this year, we had to strive to achieve the first place win, and that's just what we did, improving our episodes, website, and project video. Because of this win, we moved on to the regional technology competition, where we also received first place. We then moved over to the Georgia, Stu or Georgia State Student Technology Competition, and that is where we won second place. Our experience throughout this time was absolutely amazing, and we feel the need to produce better content overall so that we can get the win. You will find that both Paul and I are very, very competitive, <laughs> and always like to be the best. <laughs> this is what we hope for the future of the Grand College. Thank you all. I was your host, Red, and I was your co-host, Colin. Bye-bye! <laughs>
proportionate for men at this time, bottom with the largest number. Uh, next slide, but we're, we're constantly in that. But, uh, but what I want to bring to your attention um, is the fact that in the last three years, if we go back and get this data, guess what? We are number two in the percentage over this three year term in the state of Georgia in our percentage of growth in this population. So that's bringing with it a lot of challenges um, with it. And wanted to talk to you just a couple of minutes about that. Next slide, Thank you. So to be more accurate about it, with updated data, we are up 27% this year alone in that particular population. We've had, we're now at about 10% of our total student population. You can see that figure to the right. Another important thing I want to tell you about is that since the first day of school of this year, we have, that says 109. I did that slide about two weeks ago. We we're at 114 today, right before I came in here. Students have never been in a United States school before. We call them newcomers of all ages. Uh, if you can just picture 114 children, in the school, so classroom school, that's a lot of numbers. So what are we doing about this? Number one, I'm gonna let you know, um, so you would be aware this is going on. Our challenges are at our Newcomers Academy, which you saw that video um, several months ago, uh, a video that we have with Newcomers, but we've already served 46 students total this year. Right now they're at 37, they're not, they're at 39. As of today, we added one more this week and one last week to the newcomer at the high school. That's located at the Sims. So we're bringing in um, a, an additional ESOL teacher because of our FTD earnings um, into BASO, which is, of course, right next door. So we have a, a full fledged plan to kind of attack that issue of what we're going to do um, at the high school level. Elementary, we've been challenged by the, these newcomers to come in with absolutely heavy. Is in the house. Uh, they're one of the schools that's been most affected by that. Um, and we are, um, she mentioned Imagine Learning, Invoice Being Paid. That is a program that uh, we're purchasing with Title III uh, carrier funds, the federal funds. And it, its main purpose is to help English learners that are start with little or nothing. So our ESOL teachers are challenged with not being able to be there all day for each individual kid to give them what they need. So we're, we're having to come up with a lot of creative and innovative ways to make sure that our entire teacher population uh, is benefited by the additional help that we can provide to them to know how to meet this challenge. Um, and at the middle school level, we have the same issue as the elementary. We don't have a newcomer's formal program there. So what um, we are doing is we are also using the Imagine Learning. Um, we have added um, teachers to three of our middle schools that will help uh, the ESOL population, that will help spread that um, professional assistance to them in the English to Speakers of Other Languages program. Excellent. This is just a glimpse of that type of Imagine Learning. It's a wonderfully highly recommended program. We did a pilot with it back in January, that extremely popular. Um, and it scaffolds uh, home language for a while. Like if a student is not sure what they're doing, it tells them really briefly, go to the answer, or tell them in their home language um, what you know, they're trying to get you to do this. And so it's a wonderful program um, that we're going to get now for summer use by students. That's what we're going to rush use those carrier funds for that. Um, in addition, next slide. Yeah, we have new, established a new training program. So in our elevation platform that we have that you so kindly a, a year or two ago um, approved that funding um, in our platform elevation, they have new training modules now that just come up with and several of them are how to deal with newcomers not just the uh, student that's been in the ESOL program for a few years, but they're coming brand new to the country. And so they bring emotional, academic needs both at the same time for our school system. So we have a module, we have 12 units of study that um, each school has been assigned a newcomer's expert or a contact there, and we'll be training those. 
um, beginning this summer intently. And I believe my last slide is good demonstrated uh, training through elevation as well. Um, and you can't see that really well, but this is the slide of the newcomer training that is particularly for administration purposes. And what are the challenges that these students bring? What additional? So we're being very proactive and pleased to report to you, but we are seeing um, a, a big challenge here that uh, just wanted to be aware of the population. Are there any questions? How many languages do we currently have spoken in our Barrett okay. cases? The last that we did, uh, we had that on there, it was 29 different ones. Yeah. And um, most, uh, a good number of our uh, newcomers are not, you know, the majority is going to be Spanish. We think we kind of that. Um, and we anticipate that. But recently we've been in Russia, we have an uh, Afghan family uh, that's just moved here. That the church is sponsoring, and given that they're registering now, so we've got them and Russian and Ukrainian on speaking up. It's probably not surprising. It's our retention with these students. Are, are they staying in school? Are they persevering? And yes, we're we're tracking that um, because that's a very important thing, particularly when we get to nine, you know, nine to twelve. Or, uh, grades, but if you look at this population, whereas we have a certain number of students that will exit the program um, by their scores, we test them, as you probably recall, annually to see if they're ready to exit the program. So we always lose some and we're gaining many more. But what we're doing is we're encouraging the schools that each other to look at that subgroup and look, we are beginning to measure all of that retention on for this staying, not only in school, but are they staying here. And bear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Anything else? Great program. We appreciate your effort. I no, appreciate your support. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Now, Dr. Wilson. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Okay, so tonight I'm here to talk with you all about a program called Character Strong. It's for social, emotional, and character development. Um, and so our superintendent recommends placing the adoption and purchase of Character Strong program on the table until our next regularly scheduled meeting, but we want to go ahead and um, talk with you all about the program tonight um, and fill you in on what we've been uh, talking about and doing so far. So if you think back to earlier this year, um, you all approved our new strategic plan for the next five years. And so one of the goals stated in that strategic plan is that we are going to ensure all students have access to a safe and positive learning environment resulting in healthy social development, increased academic outcomes, and improved graduation rates. So several of our action steps um, for that goal and to accomplish that goal are highlighted there on that slide. Um, but the strategic plan was really our push to get us looking into a program to address engagement, belonging, and student well-being. Um, so we put together a process here. We're going to go over these steps tonight and then fill you in on what Character Strong is all about. Um, so we identified a team first, and, um, and that team put together the process of identifying and evaluating the programs that we were going to look at. Um, so we first identified our team and established our team members. We had several administrators with us. Um, teachers, we had an instructional coach, an academic interventionist, counselors, and our behavior intervention and support coordinator. So you can see there's a whole host of um, different folks in the room with different expertise. Um, and then our team identified our goals. Um, we reviewed our strategic plan and we set criteria for what we were going to look for in a program. Um, we identified the timeline, uh, when and how we were going to make decisions, and then we set aside time to get estimates and quotes for this budget cycle. So after we identified the criteria, 
and what we were looking for kind of our non-negotiables um, and what challenges we had. Um, we got to work looking for programs that serve K through 12 students. And so um, we found several programs that, that fit that need, and we decided to demo three of them, and they were Seven Mindsets, Move This World, and Character Strong. So we scheduled demos with all three programs, and then um, two of the three gave us full access to their platform for several weeks or months, so we could kind of delve in ourselves and see if we liked um, the program. All right, so in the beginning, um, I told you that we had um, in the first stages, we set um, our criteria of what we were looking for and if that program was going to address the challenges that we thought we may have. And so this is what we created our rubric um, based on right here. And so the first one was flexibility. And so what we mean by that is how flexible is it to use in the school day? Can we do it in five minute chunks? Do we have to give a whole hour lesson? Um, we really wanted to make sure that was flexible for all teachers to use. Um, intervention support, we wanted to make sure that the program had tier two and tier three behavior interventions um, for RTI. And so um, that was something that was really important to us like, from the rubric. We wanted to be feasible. And what we mean by that is, um, is it something that we're actually going to accomplish? We're going to have high fidelity with it or if it's actually going to do it. Um, we wanted it to be engaging and relatable to all grade levels. You know, sometimes, um, you know, if you're getting the same thing as kindergartners, it's really not engaging to them anymore. A big one was parent communication resources. We thought it was very important to be transparent with our families um, and that we had newsletters and things to go out to them weekly and monthly so they can work with us on the same skills that we're working with their students and speaking the same language at home. Um, we wanted to make sure that we could easily integrate it into our schools. Um, it, that's important to do it every day and not just a 20 to 30 minute lesson from the student counselor once a month. We really wanted these skills to click. Um, we wanted it to address bullying and also have professional development support. So the program that checked all of those boxes for us across the board is a character development program called Character Strong. So let's talk about what Character Strong looks like. Um, so they have a vertical alignment um, pre-K through 12. And so they have a elementary program called Purposeful People. Um, and there are nine character traits involved in pre-K through fifth grade. So that's really cool because you can have a character trait of the month. And there are three social emotional skills um, to, to really promote three outcomes. And so those outcomes are well-being, engagement, and belonging. And so those social emotional skills, they call them be kind be strong, and be well. But what that really is, is be kind is emotion regulation, be strong is executive functioning, and be well are social skills. So you can see there in um, pre-K and kindergarten, we're teaching um, emotion regulation by identifying emotions. We're teaching executive functioning by showing them how to follow directions and social skills, um, teaching them how to listen. Right, and then we go all the way to fifth grade, and you can see it's vertically aligned. Now we're talking about stress management, goal setting, and leadership. Okay, um, and so then we move into the middle school and the high school, and these have the same three outcomes well being, engagement, and belonging. But here, the difference is um, knowing the difference between knowing and doing. And so, for example, you can see that emotions in that first section, um, if students have knowledge of their emotions and understanding of, of emotions and how they feel, um, they'll better be able to regulate their emotions and how they act. And so we're just trying to teach them that connection. And the same goes with empathy, compassion, values and purpose, goals and habits, and leadership and teamwork. And so again, those outcomes would be well-being, engagement, and belonging. So um, Character Strong, it you know, checks a lot of our boxes. It's teaching our kids their development, I think soft skills for when they get out to the workforce, um, leadership, you know, being a part of a team, uh, having a purpose and goals. Um, and so we're, we're really excited to recommend this program to you all. So what questions do you have for me? When can they start? <laughs> when can they start? <laughs> uh, we're hoping this coming school year. Sorry, no call. So this, this is just sixth and 12th grade. Well, if we go back one slide, you can see that pre-K through fifth grade, and they really focus on these character traits and industry levels as well. So is this changing? Is this taking the place of the be the voice on the bullying? Yes, we okay. felt like this was addressing bullying prevention 
with the social skills and you know they talk about friendship and um, and conflict resolution and things like that so we're teaching them skills on how to handle that um internally so we think this will be <clears throat> a better on the bullying because that's what i'm hearing constantly this mm -hmm. concerning me as i'm out talking to parents and stuff is that we've had a lot of kids that are now being homeschooled or have even dropped out of school because our bullying has gotten so bad and it's not just what i would call bullying when we say there's different things to bullying we're talking to the point of children almost having broken bones i'm surprised we have not got to I think this point. gets to the root of the problem because you can tell and kids all day long to be kind, be right. kind, be kind. But I want to make this sure is that better we're than that. following through um, with what that really is, and and really because that's sad that we've got parents having to homeschool or that they're worried that their children are really going to get hurt more bad. That we've got to, you know, what what can we do? Is what I'm saying. Other than just putting that in, what can we do as a system? I mean, do you have any? advice for us um i do think that this program is going to help with you know, awareness and positive relationship skills and responsible decision making and um working you know my, my child is in second grade and she's going to help her like her to have the conflict that she was really not how to deal with it and this is going to teach them that um, it's very interactive and engaging um so it's teaching the kids skills um, and, and while they're doing it every single day that's really what makes the difference not the counselor going in and doing one lesson they really need to see it every single day for it to really um make an impact on the I think the biggest issue from Beverly's point is how do we incorporate the parents in, in, in a program like this? Now, you this know? program does have a lot of parent communication yeah. in English and Spanish. They provide newsletters that you can pull from to send home to the parents, and they give the parents activities. There's also activities that they can do on the playground. So, some of them have supplies, some of them don't, but they get to play games or they can use them. Um, so it will also be things like that with the parents as well. Yeah, I think that's where bullying starts. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. I have several questions. Okay. One, um, can we go back to the very first slide and talk about the very first slide? This one? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, can you define successful restorative practices? So restorative practices are some of the practices that we are looking at using at the alternative school. Um, I'm not trained in restorative practices, um, but I do know that that's something that our behavior intervention and support coordinator is working with alternative school um, on and helping those students uh, get back on track and uh, have positive you know, skills when they come back to transition back to their own school. The one of the other questions I have for this is I take it that we are identifying students who need to participate in this, or is this going to be for everybody? All for everybody. Yeah. everybody. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so you're going to, I, when are you going to actually do this in a student's day? What is this going to take away from? So one of the next steps, since you guys approved this, is to meet with our principals and put plans in place. I know that some um, principals are already looking at, you know, they already are kind of you know this is coming, so they might be um, adding that to their schedule for next year. But the great thing about Parker Strong is it can be done in five, a five minute session each day, so five to 20 minutes. So instead of lumping it into one hour, we can break it up throughout the week so it can fit in a morning meeting or at the beginning of class or before they exit for the day. Okay. And the, the last question I have is. How are you going to track the success of this program? Do you have a rubric that you're using, or is this going to be done on an individual child basis, or how are we going to do this? So that's one of the things we're discussing too is measuring the effectiveness and making sure that we're doing it with fidelity. So we may have some uh, impact checks. We may be doing walk to make sure that's being done, um, rubrics to make sure it's being done. But we'll also look at our uh, savers, that's our behavior screener. And of course, you know, if it's really successful, it may even you know, increase our attendance or our behavior issues. And so we can look at that data as well. And we also track all our behaviors. You know, we track because, because it's the way we do it and the right thing to do. And we also have, of course, state reporting, um, which 
honestly, the past year or two, bullying has been down, <coughs> um, to be perfectly honest. Um, and so I think we need to get back on. We had, before COVID, we had gotten a, uh, had been on this subject matter about that. And um, uh, I think we need probably to pick up back, uh, you know, some more education of what bullying actually is. Is it a case of bullying? Is it a case of being mean? Is it a case of being rude? Um, these type of things. Um, and so I think that's something that is definitely, for what I've seen, is a part of this and is something we have focused on really hard in the past. And um, with all the turmoil that we've been through, we focused on it, but not not like we said. It gives us a very good um framework to to do that and and, and com continue to do it better from what i'm saying my concern is <clears throat> this sounds really good and i know y'all have spent a lot of time determining what the best program is but in in so many things that we do we go after the best and then we and then it, I won't say fails, but it's not as successful as we would like because we don't really track it properly. You see what I'm saying? So I think that, that it's going to be interesting to see how we actually track this so that we can measure progress in the program. Yeah, I, and I, I agree with that. I think um, that's one thing I've kind of been, song I've been singing for a while is, you know, we have to bring everything together. We have a lot of great things going on, but sometimes they're different things. So. I think this is a great way of bringing that together so we have one thing to track and, and instead of 18 different ones. And I think it's really great that we can all be speaking the same language. So if you ever train the students that transfer one school to the other, they've already learned the same stuff. And so right. they get there and they just pick that up and keep Yep, and that's an important well, to, with all curriculum. To Lynn's point, it's, I think this is one of the most important things to track because mm -hmm. even if bullying is down and that's great, it still doesn't change yeah. the fact I mean, that adolescent zero, suicide, rest, sure. yeah, adolescent suicide is the second leading cause of death. So this yeah. is, Totally the most, one of the most important things we need to be talking about during our children's day, it, and it is absolutely imperative that we put it, it is, into and it's, you know, day. and we've talked about it before, and, and you know, it's, it's, I think one of the real things that that we're struggling with, and this isn't just Barrow County, this is really national. National at this point is the fact that you know, when we were in school, you know, I got picked on some. I, sure. I remember it, still remember some of those people. Mm -hmm. But you had, you know, you went home and you had your friends in the neighborhood, you were at home, you know, your, your ball team, whatever, you got away from it. And they these can't. things right here have that amplified it to no end. These kids, that is what parents are if parents aren't watching them on, the, on <laughs> these things, they're the cyberbullying and the things that carry on, you, they just, it doesn't stop. And, 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 you know, that's a really hard thing for us to deal with. Mm -hmm. Um, except through educational things like this. And and this is, I saw some of that in here too. And, and, and that's a huge that's piece. That's some of them are saying. Sure. It starts at school, but then it kind of, so maybe we yeah. can't A lot of times it starts on Instagram and it. comes to school. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. yeah, we can't. And like when, we're, when I was in school, you could run to your, and then you have seven day or whatever. Yeah, you had the weekend. These kids yeah. cannot because they have, you know, that. Or Absolutely. Have, oh, it's a huge, huge. Societal they can't problem. get away with it. And then somebody was telling me that it was maybe 10 years ago. A child in, was a Yarga, Hingham Moore, one of those schools over there, 10 year old, committed suicide. Sure. And he had a friend that was on the EMT that had to go out to that home oh. and deal with that family that it happened to. So these are things that are real, okay. that are going We've on. All, unfortunately, all of us have been in this business for any length of time that dealt with it. And, um, right. and, you know, I remember again in high school, it was, Young man that lived, he was a great older than I was, lived behind me, you know, committed suicide. And that was part of it back then, too. And, you know, it, um, yeah, I've all, always often said, too, if, if it's, if, if the adults could have fixed this problem in society totally, it would have been fixed a long time ago. Um, it's getting the kids to understand what it is, how it affects others, and those type of things. That, that's really the hard part of it. This seems a lot more educational. I think kids it these is. days, the way they learn, yep. I think even with my own son, I see you guys teaching them a lot more about the whys. Kids right. seem to want to know more about the whys, and this program seems to get a lot more about the the why. It's not just be kind, it's why. There's a lot more of a why. Right. I think this program will be a lot and more And just making them aware, you know, there are different types of bullying. There, you know, there's the physical, there's the emotional, there's the ostr ostracizing. There's, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, it's a very complex 
thing. And, and you know, it's, it's easy to say bully, 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 but it's really much more. I mean, there are college courses that mm -hmm. you can take that go into, you know, just in Dr. I took one or two, and I'm sure our counselors have taken many more, but it's, you know, there's everything from your physical victims to your proactive victims, and that seek it out for attention, which nobody ever wants to hear that, but it, it is a, it's, it's a, fact it, it, there are, it happens and it's just a very very complex but just like everything else education and, and doing it the right way is the way to to, to make it better and right i think for everything i've seen this is this is i mean nothing's perfect um but i do like the fact again that you're able to track it a lot better and keep up yeah. with with how well it's going yeah, i think that you said the when i heard the most you know, when i was in school was not the physical. So when I was hearing the physical, I was like, whoa, now that, that's, that's what a lot of people, boys will think, those, I got beat up, like, you know, whoa. that's the bully, that was the bully we dealt with, I got yeah. beat up, in the, you know, uh, on I, the playground. When I was hearing that, I was like, whoa, that's definitely yeah. like the other one. Okay. Well, thank you for your research, we appreciate all your efforts. Yeah, and, this uh, is great, thank we'll you. We'll put this on the, uh, out for review, and discuss it again next month. Thank, thank you. you. Dr. Wood. Good evening. So I have the pleasure tonight to uh, ask for the superintendent to recommend some new courses for our CTA classes. Um, we, uh, they are listed for you there. So we'd like to begin offering these DOE approved courses for students at the high school. Um, they go through the level of uh, coming to sort of a request at the maybe the student level or the school need level, then it goes to the school governance team, and then on to uh, superintendent and the board to make these recommendations. Um, so you can see that at Appalachia, we would like to add a sports marketing pathway, which falls under marketing. Um, at all three schools, we'd like to offer a, what we're gonna consider a fourth level sort of capstone course for our ad, our ad students. So right now our ad students have several pathways they can take and adding this cooperative agribusiness sales and marketing will allow them sort of a fourth level course um, so that they can uh, continue to work with their ad teachers and hopefully get out into the community working on either actual internships, paid, uh, paid positions. Um, we are offering uh, the public management and administration pathway, which is a new pathway offered at the state level. Um, it also serves a dual purpose. So students in this pathway will not only get CTA credit, but they'll also get social studies credit. Um, and so VASA will start with that pathway next year. Um, you can see the unmanned aircraft drone, which is uh, just a new thing. We're going to see where that takes us. We don't know a, a lot about it. We've had some uh, small sessions on that. And information support and services out of the IT pathway, digital electronics, which falls into the manufacturing pathway. Um, and then the uh, wine barrier will also add that uh, add cooperative business. Um, and at this time, there's no financial impact. We have teachers to uh, teach all of these classes, um, and there are no additional funds needed. Um, CTAE will cover any of those associated costs down the road. Oh, well, that's good. I know, you like that, huh? Yes. Look at you. Yes. Any questions about, yes. Did the pathways under, for VASA, did the pathways fall under the, mag, the four magnet programs, or? Yes, so these fall under, a lot of these will fall under what they have for their uh, STEM, for their science, technology, engineering programs. So that's kind of where they're fitting them, sort of the um, IT pathways, the drone pathway, or the drone course, it will actually be the whole pathway. Anything else? Consent agenda? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Darby. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Michael. Um, annually, we uh, review the code of conduct and we do that typically in the months of January, and February. And um, as for uh, board, state board rule and our local uh, fair policy, uh, that falls into that. And then our governance process that we have in place uh, with our charter system, 
we ask that our school governance teams, administrative teams to review this uh, here in those months of January and February each year um, and ask for revisions and potential changes. Uh, this year, I'm uh, well, proud to say that we didn't have any suggested changes or revisions, and we're asking the superintendent, the board, uh, to accept our um, SY23 uh, Bear County Code of Conduct. Questions that I can answer for that? Nobody had any additions mm -hmm. or subtractions? No. Oh, okay. Even asked three times. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing originally. Yes. 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 Okay. And you, Dr. Green? Okay. Um, we are bringing to you a small policy revision to policy JCD on student conduct. Uh, we just want to add a paragraph at the bottom of this uh, policy uh, in order to comply with um, state law 20-2-751. Point six, and so the language that we're recommending adding to the board policy is taken straight out of the law. Uh, and it's related to particular certain behaviors that happen on the school bus, requiring that a parent or the student involved in, in um, those particular activities and the representative from our school system get together to develop a uh, contract for um, the student involved in those behaviors. And so we're just adding, recommending that we place policy JCD on student conduct on the table until the next regularly scheduled meeting so that uh, our community can have an opportunity to check with that and offer any public input. But in this particular case, we're just taking a section out of the law and putting it into our policy. Any questions that I can answer? Um, I'm a little bit concerned that I realize this is what the state says we need to put in here, okay? but there's nothing about we it talks about suspension from riding the bus, but it doesn't say anything about um, expulsion from being able to be on a bus. And there may be uh, instances where. We need to be able to say that's it, you're done. And it we says do. shall not be, it says include, but shall not be limited to. So, Again. not be limited to means I guess we could do more, right? Right, but it would be. I better. think the type of assault or battery would dictate then if it went mm -hmm. to the next oh, yeah. level. Yeah. yeah. That we're in okay. society. This is actually just adding the requirement of developing a contract. It talks about in addition to any other corrective action imposed. So we would deal with the behavior according to our code of conduct. And then in addition to that, we would put together this uh, required contract. So the, I, I would not interpret that to suggest that we. So this is this is teachers. basically just saying we need a contract that the parent needs to sign, this yeah. saying that this behavior will not be tolerated. Yeah. Yes, okay, yeah. it's a, all right. It's a step in that process, but if it's something that's too far over the top, and we we have always done it, we, well, we've done it past several years anyway. It, you know, fighting, especially at a certain level, mm -hmm. um, that's just too dangerous to to allow on buses. So, but this is a step we have to put in. And the parents have to sign that report. Of the they have to be offered it. You know, they if they signed it or not. You know, we, well, can't, we can't force them, but yeah. Yeah. What, what the yeah. law is, you know, saying here is that we, um, in, in these particular instances, after we address it with the appropriate corrective actions, which is what we call consequences, punishments, but that we would then also develop a contract to make sure that we put them on notice, essentially, that this behavior. Cannot happen again. Yeah. And this, I'm not exactly sure that I can try to explain to you what was in legislature's minds when they put this in the law, but it is um, taken straight out of George Law. Mm -hmm. This part of that paperwork we get them at the beginning of the year that shows all the kind of mm -hmm. stuff. It is, it's just another piece we have to, have to follow. Consent agenda. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Bernal. Got several items here. The first is uh, 
Request from the county for sewer easement at Humber Elementary School. So we're asking the superintendent to recommend approval of the 40 foot temporary construction easement, 20 foot permanent utility easement at the back of Auburn Elementary School. This is for a gravity fed sewer line. And uh, this is to improve their infrastructure uh, in, in the Auburn area. The financial impact to us. And uh, we reviewed the pathway there and don't see anything uh, of concern. Questions? Consent agenda. Thank you, sir. This next item is for visual uh, board materials, purchase and installation at our middle school. We're asking the superintendent to recommend the purchase and installation of whiteboards for 39 middle school math classrooms, players, products, and equipment. In the amount of $76,716 for whiteboards and installation. Ms. Bolden <coughs> worked together with our maintenance department to collect the prices for the boards and the installation. Um, and she put a great deal of time and effort into that. I appreciate all that she did to help with that piece there. Um, the financial impact. Uh, as I mentioned, $76,716 to be funded uh, through park funds. And uh, this work would be scheduled to be done this summer in, in our middle schools, uh, just giving them um, the math programs um, a much better opportunity to uh, teach the kids and um, help them to learn. So, you know, if there are specific questions about the curriculum side of this, it's both can answer that. Um, that's our, our recommendation. So these are special whiteboards, 360 degree map. I read down there. It, it's a standard whiteboard that we put up, you know, in a new school, for example. It's just they're on each one. Okay. You know, they may even, they may even take down some bulk boards. Up in so, room. so it's 39 math classrooms, but it's really 39 times four whiteboards. Uh, the number of boards. Uh, and they're different sizes too. Mm -hmm. There's 20 four by eight boards, 42 four by tens, right. three four by 12, and then 49 four yeah. by 16. That so seems expensive when you first look at it, but then when you read that, yeah. that's a lot of boards. It's a lot of boards. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's just trying to take advantage of all that available wall space that they have. And that's Makes why sense. they have to go with some different sizes. Some you can get a big board on, and other walls, and sure. you know, the small one right there. Sure. Some center general. Mm -hmm. Next. Okay. Um, we're asking the superintendent to recommend a guaranteed maximum price of two hundred thousand dollars to improve agriculture facilities in the district. Um, in November of last year, if you all recall, we had. We all approved Charles Black Construction to be our construction manager for non-state funded projects. Mm -hmm. Projects in excess of twenty-five thousand dollars. So we're going to bring those back to you, of course, um, for your approval. So that's what this is. Um, these are just much-needed improvements at, at our two farms: one on Highway 81 and the other one on Highway 53, the conservation property that we have out there. And it's just for any number of things, and it's going to be a little bit different at the Highway 81 property as it is for the uh, Highway 53 property. Um, so this is just going to help us to kind of capture a lot of things that have, that have really needed to be addressed for some time at these locations. Questions? Consent agenda? No. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask our director of maintenance, Greg Webb, to speak on this next side. Of course. Good evening. It's been a minute since I've seen you guys. So, hello. hello. Glad to be back and glad to have a chance to come up here again. Um, this is a little small contract for uh, pressure washing at all of our schools. We um, 
put out an ad in the Georgia procurement registry to see how many folks will come be interested in pressure washing. We had 16 people show up to the pre proposal conference, which was a whole lot more than we expected. We had five people respond to it. Uh, she had a copy of the results. We had three vendors that were within just a few hundred dollars of each other on the base amount of pressure wash set areas at each school. We gave them a map of the school. We showed them the square footage of the special pressure wash, and we put curves, uh, all the awnings in the front, and so they provided pricing. The difference again was in the uh, extra cost, we asked them to provide unit costs so that we could do work throughout the year with them on top of what we wanted to do this summer. And we wanted to have a set price when they came back to do the work. So we assigned the, their unit cost to some set square footage. Used it. I, I just made up. I took five schools and said that we would do 1,500 more square feet of uh, sidewalk and say 750 feet of curb at five different locations and added those up and based off the unit cost, we uh, recommended a company called Stonewall Services out of Athens that did work. Um, they're, they're local. We had another local company, Crystal Clear, that was um, second and then Milk Money, which is a great name for a company, came in the third. Mm -hmm. um, all, all very close and there's probably the possibility that we work with them at some point throughout the Term but we have never used them before, right? Correct. Okay. Do we get, have we talked to other people who have used them? Yes. Okay. So we've got to deal with those. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Houston, back to see us. All right. Um, if it's okay with you, we're going to go over the general fund budget. I'm not going to go into detail, like I did on Wednesday, just kind of a brief overview. So, Suzanne, if you can click the one that says um, highlights. Okay. Um, so, this is just, just going to give you a quick recap of our general budget. Um, as always, the, uh, the decisions will focus on our vision and mission, vision boldly committed to student success, mission ensuring an exceptional education that leads each student to become a high achieving and responsible citizen. And our focus is building our leaders differently. And of course, we also make sure any decisions will support our strategic plan, uh, academics and student success, elevating the teaching profession, communication and culture, and financing and infrastructure. Um, these are our major guidelines and goals. I will read them to you, but they're there for you. We went through them on Wednesday night. Our process is always to start at zero based budgeting. I'll review, review of staffing and allotments with departments and schools, submission of budgets from all departments, review of budgets by business services, review of my executive cabinet, and then we present board for approval, which is what I'm going to fill in. Our revenue assumptions. Our property tax digest uh, increase of 10.3% compared to the prior year budget. Our millage rate remains at 18.5 mils. We're assuming that our millage rate is going to remain at 18.5 mils. Uh, QBE funding increase of 3.7 million over the fiscal year 2022 budget. According to Governor Kent, there will be no austerity reductions or state cuts this year for fiscal year 2023. Our TABT. TABT tax or our car tax will increase um, 1.5 million, we believe. And our midterm QBE adjustment budgeted at 500,000. And of course, our interest rates are down, so we're budgeting less for interest. Our overall budgeted revenues look like this. So um, we're budgeting $155,154,123. And that has an increase of ten million four hundred thirty thousand one hundred and seven dollars from the prior year budget. For our expenditures, um, this is a new format, by the way. I'm, I'm catching up with what everybody else is doing. And so Shinley uh, went through my PowerPoint. She updated it, so it's the same information, just it looks a lot cleaner and has our rules. Um, state required benefits. Uh, our, these are our state mandates. Our teacher retirement system employer share increase. 
of 0.17%. So our TRS for the employer side is going from 19.81 to 19.98. So that increase will be about $134,000 for us. The total general fund cost for uh, TRS or our pension plan is $17 million. Our classified health insurance will not have an increase, but the cost of the general fund is $16.1 million for 2023. Our uh, the total budget for health and TRS, those are two things that we can't you know, change. We have to do what the state tells us to do is $33.1 million. And then well, also they have House Bill 146 is parental leave. Um, they get three weeks if you have a child or if your spouse has a child, or I think it's even adoption. So the cost to us is about $250,000 per year. We usually have about 50 individuals over the past couple of years who have, who have been able to take advantage of this. Our investment in faculty and staff, our um, annual level, so if you're eligible for a step increase, um, we have that available, $1,598,000, including benefit and benefits for eligible certified and classified employees per their applicable salary scale. The governor, um, $2,000 increase in the state salary schedule for teachers, that's going to total $2,945,547, including benefits. We're adding 40 net teaching positions, one shared instructional coach for AIM and VASA, extended year for the ag teachers, an additional 10 days, reading and writing materials, textbooks for growth and replacement, math manipulatives, high school science and math supplies, and fine art supplies for our band, horse, and art. For our academic support, we're going to um, fund the tap, tableau, 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 Thank you. Data analytics tool, uh, grade six through 12 math content specialist, a VASA AIM administrator, HR recruitment and induction coordinator, Chromebook carts for high school, and future elementary school principal opening for the fall of 2023. That's a half year um, for a, a principal to open that school. For our investment in student health, we're going to add three more counselors one guidance clerk and additional security cameras. For our investment in operation, um, technology backup solution for maintenance, um, they have a significant escalation in labor, material, fuel, and energy costs. Transportation has an increase in fuel costs. Uh, we are organizing our payroll and adding financial software support, uh, a transit van for technology, increased insurance costs and contracts with outside organizations. So our overall budgeted expenditures at this point is $155,355,181. So um, if you take our tentative budget revenue, subtract the expenditures, we're at a $201,058 deficit or a net loss for the year. Um, as we like to always remind you that 86.6% .6 of our budget is salaries and benefits. So our tentative budgeted revenues, as I said, $155,154,123. Our budgeted expenditures, $155,355,181. We will take our fund balance at the end of fiscal year 2022, beginning of 2023, it's gonna be 45 million. So we're gonna to have to use $201,058 out of those reserves for a predicted budget ending fund balance. Um, 44 million seven hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred forty-two, and again I didn't correct the fiscal year 22. It should be 23. And all these actual figures are not available at the time for the uh, fund balance. This is just a prediction of our fund balance. All right. So then we gave you some items to consider, the board to consider. So the first one was um, the state is adding two thousand to the uh, teacher salary scale. Uh, we asked if you wanted to do an additional $2,000 to the local supplement for all certified staff. That total cost was $2,945,547. We also talked about an increase in starting salary for entry-level non-certified support staff. This is grades 3 through 11. It includes our parapros and our clerks, so they would get an increase. Um, total cost to do that is $143,724. We also talked about a 4% increase for all non-certified staff. Total cost of that, $691,365. And the last thing we talked about, excuse me, was $25,000 per year for three years requested by the tax assessor. 
Have you all agreed to all of that except for the tax assessor at this point? Is that correct? So right now our tentative fund uh, budget of revenues didn't change 155 million, 154,123. Our expenditures from the prior slide, 155,435. The beginning fund balance 45 million. So we had an initial net loss of 201,000. So the additional items approved by the board was $2,000 increase, 2.9 million. Salary increase, increase in grade three through 11, 843,000. 4% increase for the classified staff, 691,000. So our budgeted ending fund balance um, fiscal year 2023 will be the third. 40,318,306. Um, our next steps are that we will vote on a tentative budget next week, May 3rd. Vote on the tentative budget, all other funds, June 7th. We'll hold public hearings, June 13th, June 16th. And then we'll vote on final budgets um, to be announced, but we're hoping that. Well, I'm sure that I did. Um, we're hoping that that will happen on the last work work uh, work, work session for June, which is the twenty first. I want to clarify. I think we had a little confused. I was a little confused at our last meeting. June twenty first, right? Okay. So, is there any discussion? Anything you want to talk about? The only question that I have that came up since then, and it's because it was brought up to me by somebody, um, an employee actually. Do we have a cost for, uh, and, and you may not tonight, that's fine. Um, on what, when you mentioned the extra transportation cost for fuel, $400,000. But I'm saying, how much of that do we know how much maybe because we have employees driving their buses out of, out of county home? Do we have any idea or we shouldn't have any of that. Because I was told that we have some that are. If you don't mind, can you just give the doctor Green about that? Yeah, if, so if we've got a, a report on that, we need to handle okay. that okay. as a personnel issue because okay. that's not something sure. we do. That was just all that I saw. Now, there are buses that go out of the district every day for uh, yeah. MVP, for homeless, yes. and a lot of other things. And sometimes people get those things confused. Okay. So. okay. The only comment I'm going to make about this is that um, we have some of the absolute best staff and, and teachers in the world. I'll, I'll put our people up against anybody. Absolutely. And that has been deliberate um, in our hiring processes. And we are, because we have so many, well, because our tax base is basically flipped, we should have 60 to 70 percent commercial industrial and 30, 40 percent residential. And, and we don't, we have the exact opposite of that. Um, it, it's difficult for us to um, do pay increases, but I honestly feel like this, this is just necessary. We've got to give our teachers raises in order to continue to be somewhat competitive with Absolutely. everybody around yeah. us. Um, but mainly because they deserve it. They deserve it. They work hard. They deserve every penny of it. They do. And so, you know, can't have retention if you don't pay them. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the good thing is these increases take us just above the average, which we have been below. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're, we definitely are making some progress. Are we comfortable with the progress? And we still did it without raising our mill rate, which we have not done in how many years? 17. 17 years. <laughs> Let the record show. And, and with, with, as Ms. Stephen said, dealing with the challenges of, of an invert, basically an inverted yeah, tax base is right. what it comes down to. Which some of our neighboring counties do not have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot, several of our neighboring companies have a bond on top of their millage rate. We, we've right. never done that. Right. Um, so there, there are a lot of variables. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to push that on up, but um, I think. Well, I hope that the industrial base changes. I think it is. It is changing thanks to our economic to. development department at yeah. Barrow mm -hmm. County. Right. So and, um, um, if we can 
uh, what, I, what I'm saying is I'd like to see us do this this year. I know it takes money out of reserves, but I'm comfortable with the reserve level that we have yeah, at this too. point. And hopefully we'll be able to um, see an increase in the industrial base tax rates and, and be able to do more in the next couple of years. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and also want to mention and give a shout out to our planning and personnel department because they have every year now gone back and looked at the scales and, and balanced them and moved things up in certain areas where they need you know closer to where they need to be it's it's a it's a yearly process and ongoing um but we haven't just let it they haven't just let that stay stagnant every year like um like years past you know, you know um so that that part has you know there have been some tweaks here and there also that that have increased salaries and ranges and those type of things such as the the, the uh ask on for grades three through 11 um, those type of things so we've been doing a lot of those things as we can uh in spite of the, the limitations we have when it comes to, to funding but, uh, because we act that um absolutely our people are y'all have heard me say it ad nauseum it's a people business and we got to take care of our people first um and it's been you know recession's been the recession was tough and we're you know we are still paying so to speak for some of what we we needed to do during the, the great recession and it's just now starting to come out and of course covid and everything else kind of stopped it didn't didn't stop it totally but it slowed uh, it a little bit and now we're, we're seeing a good piece where we can move up um and, and do what we need to do for our, for our folks and you know i just you know put it out there too on behalf of everyone thank all of our staff members for what they do and and being very bold and sticking with us and, and putting kids first and um you're not going to you're right you're not going to find a better bunch of folks in in any business or in, in education i'll put them i'll put them up against anyone and uh, they just put their heads down get the job done and take care of our kids and, and our community and um, and we're seeing the benefits that our community is improving and a lot of that goes to the what the students that we're turning out and are coming back and they're working in the community and they're parents are here and they're supporting and people are moving into the community because of those things so it's um you know it's it's a cyclic cyclic thing it, it um very it's great to see it all coming together and getting better and better um, i think we all wish it could be a little quicker when it comes to that that point i know i definitely do how are we doing how are we comparing uh, financially uh, with other counties around us on our pay for uh, like like on the transportation for bus drivers monitors, as well as because we know we have a problem getting them yeah. as and retaining them, as well as uh, it, these, these transportation. Services. We're really towards have been towards the top of the. So you correct me if I'm wrong, but um, we've been very competitive in that area for a while. We we bumped those up a while so back. Most of that yearly, and actually, um, yeah. when I do the school food nutrition or the other funds, school food nutrition is actually going up too. So we're yeah. trying to get above $12 an hour threshold. Um trying to get above that amount as I am okay. Don't say it that way, but just trying to get those lower levels up a little bit. That's that appropriate to say. Yeah. So we're comparing with other counties. I guess. So oh yeah. We're we, not losing them to other counties to go. Yeah, we, we see a little bit of that for pay, but again, our teachers uh, the ones that we see usually it, uh, our, the attrition we do see is for different reasons and pay. there's a there's a handful of that of course and there's always go, always going to be but um you know it, it's the, the kind of the really the pay thing comes in is when people the spouse gets transferred to a better paying job and, and then you yeah. know those type of things and, and but um so it's not i mean it's definitely on top of all of our minds because it's it's and we work we work to live not live to work right. but uh, but it's um again you know i think we are coming to a point i think and not when i say we it's more the royal we it's uh is a national thing we we sometimes think that you know because teachers are called to do what they do maybe we can pay them a little less and i think i've never thought that was the right way to go and it's not a good good thing to do um and i think we're coming to a realization with that as we are in a lot of other areas that you know that's not the way we need to legislate and do these types of things anymore um but it, you know it, it changes is always a process and it's, it's um 
It's definitely got its rocks in the road. So. Yeah, or just to put some closure on that uh, tax assessor ask. Mm -hmm. We pay them a two and a half percent collection fee, right? Of the total that they collect. Yes, sir. We pay the tax. The tax commissioner takes two and a half percent out of all of the the funds that they give us before they give us a check. They take two and a half percent. Um, so in essence, as they improve their process for the program that he wants to put in place, we'll actually be paying for that anyways in the percentage that they take. Exactly. So I don't see paying them $75,000 in addition to that. Yeah. I, how much, uh, Jennifer, this doesn't have to be correct, but how much did we collect from the county in sales tax? Last year, oh, I mean, uh, property taxes last year, or from all sources. Do you know? I mean, about fifty million. Fifty-seven. Is that right? Fifty-seven million. With TAT tax. No, that's TBAT tax. Also, well, that would be included. Yes, sir. So um, I'll get two, but I'm not thinking it's okay. Well, two and a half percent of fifty-seven million dollars ought to be able to fund whatever they need. Well, it's going to increase if they improve their digest through the audit that they want to do. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to make a two and a half percent pays for that. Right. Okay. Exactly. I'm sympathetic with it, but um, yeah, but there are a lot of things I'd love to have some help paying for too. Yeah. But we do what we do and we get it done. So I'd much rather we talked about this three point five million dollar number. Right, so three million dollars in additional, right? Two and a half percent of three million seventy five. Fine, three point five million dollars for us to break even. Improve the housing. Yeah, so that's a lot of fences, yeah. and there's no guarantee. <clears throat> okay, so we're putting that to bed. Yeah. Unless anybody wants to fight for it, I don't. One million four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars is two and a half percent, fifty-seven million dollars. So that's that should be able to get a close. <clears throat> okay. Are we happy with the raises? As yes. Yes, definitely. Much, sorry, we can't do more. Um, we, we can come back in December and talk about maybe another. Right. Yeah. Very good. Adjustment. Things are looking good still. Right. So, mm -hmm. Maybe sloths will be good to us for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. And we've been we've been able to do that the past few years, and I think that that's been a huge help. And so mm -hmm. we definitely would would suggest that. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Finally. Dr. Michael, I think you're going to talk about the right norms. Norm we had a board training several weeks ago now. Um, one of the things that we've been very proud of uh, the past uh, really six years now, I think, I think five times out of the six, there was one year that was it wasn't awarded, but um, this board has been an exemplary board, which is the top recognition given to um, school boards in the state um, of Georgia. And uh, part of that um, going forward Let's see, Suzanne, if you would bring up the piece that has the, the chart, um, find that one. Um, and these are the different achievement levels. And I know y'all have seen these before, but quality board, distinguished board, and exemplary board. Well, we've been exemplary board now for really six years. Um, and so it has, you know, you have the strategic planning piece, the Georgia Vision Project, and um, slide down. There was a piece that was added for this year. Um, and this, this is this piece right here. Um, the governance team has established, formally adopted, and abides by written governance team board norms and protocols. Um, so we went through a training with that um, several weeks ago. And with the majority of the board, there were a couple that could, couldn't be here for different reasons. And um, the group that was here came up with that listing. Um, you all have seen that, you have it. Um, it's also here um, if you want to take a look at it. Um, so I think really the recommendation would be to go ahead and adopt those and we, so we can turn in and secure the uh, 
every I think that's probably the last piece at this point we need to um, to secure the exemplary board status again for for the school board for next year. Um, so one of that that piece is on there, and it would be one that would be um, those board norms and protocols. Every year in January, you all kind of reaffirm our strategic plan commitment, our your code of conduct commitments. Um, and those type of things. This would be something we would add on. Um, these could, of course, be changed um, every year. Could be, you know, looked at and, and those type of things. But we would ask that every year that be one of the things we would add to that annual um, sign off, if you will, um, that the board does. Consent agenda. No, actually, I have an issue. Yes, about talking to people in my district, and they're all every one of the three precincts of district four. Every last one of them has a problem with um, if they have a concern and they forward it to me, and I'm supposed to send, uh, forward it to the superintendent or the chair to respond, especially those that have uh, served their country, such as my husband, and others who are retired from the military, to give that right as a representative. They have, some of them have fought and been willing to die for our country, and they said they have a problem with any board member or anybody that has uh, gives that right to um, over to a somebody who is not elected to represent them. Um, so I'm standing up for every one of them and I will not do that. As I've been legislatively have the responsibility not only by the state but the federal government to represent the people in my district and will do so. So I will not abide by that if this board decides to put that one clause in there. Bring up the, and I'm going to turn that over. Okay, can we look at the clause that, that Beverly's talking about? Because yeah. I have a problem with that too. Um, those two communication, maybe. Among the ones. Okay. Um, go down a little bit more. Uh, well, that's it. Um, oh, yeah, any mm -hmm. it's it's under communication yeah, among board two, members. Three, and any four, communication four, four. from mm -hmm. concerned constituents should be forwarded immediately to the superintendent and copy to the board chair. When all member board members receive an email, the board chair will reply, including the superintendent, on the thread and inform the constituent that the superintendent will respond to the inquiry and request. The part I have a problem with is that last bullet, because if we all get an email. Um, we don't necessarily know what district the constituent is in and what I have done for decades is to simply respond to say, thank you for your email. We will address this. I'm forwarding this to the superintendent. Okay. War response. And to me, that needs to be said anytime we get an email addressed to any of us. Well, the purpose so, of that bullet, I think it was you and I and somebody else, George, was to keep seven of us or nine of us, whatever, from responding in a redundant manner. Right. It, it was to make it a consistent, formal approach so that that person didn't get different responses from different people. What I'm saying, though, is we should all have the same response, basically, is that we received it. That's just courtesy. We received the email. We want this issue addressed and we're forwarding this to the superintendent. Uh, and then that's all we have to say. And I think the key word here was when all board members. So when we all get one mass email. Right. It, I think that was what That's I understood. What I was able to discuss. Right. And the bullet report. Because, you know, sometimes we look at our emails and we can tell that we all got one email versus us all responding to it all. You know, then. And some, and some people don't get on their emails as quickly. Right. But I didn't really understand it that it meant that I wasn't allowed to respond. That's what it says. That's what it says. The one before. When it says all board members. Reported. Any the one before it says, any communication from service constituents should be forwarded immediately to the superintendent copy to the board chair. The bullet before it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that you can't. You're not allowed to Then the next one that she's talking about. Now, I have always, if there's an issue and I don't know what the situation was and it needs to go to the superintendent, I give mm -hmm. it to them anyhow. Right. 
But the concern the bill says, oh, well, if they copy all of us and we give them six or seven different answers, if we're telling them that we found out what the answer is, we shouldn't be giving them six Beverly, what would you like for it to say? If it's the truth. What would you like for it to say? I mean, I just want to understand what- If it's the what... truth, we shouldn't be giving them six or seven different answers. If it's the truth. And if, says, we're, if we have found out like the answer- how, how would you like to revise it? To revise it? I just like it stricken from there. We shouldn't be forwarding it to the superintendent or the chair to answer our constituents. We were elected to do a job. That's what I'm saying. I would just like that. that. I think it's a clarification about it because I actually do not read this as, I mean, and I, I'm, so I'm in agreement, just so we're clear. I'm in agreement with you, but I don't read it the way you read it. Like if, if some, if one of, if one of my constituents, or frankly, anybody sends me an email and I want to reply to it, I think we have the, I think we have the right to reply to it. I don't think that can be Absolutely. legislated away. And I don't think that's what this says. I don't think that's a, Well, I it is saying we will reply. It is saying we will reply and we will copy them. And we are saying the superintendent will get back to you. I feel so like this is a I feel like it's issue, us putting him on the line. Issue. That's what I always thought. Well, it's that's basically putting you on the spot. A request is what it says. <sighs> Now, there's a lot, most of the time, Dr. Michael knows, I'm saying I'm for this to you, this is in your lane, or, you know, I ask him, who should this go to? I don't know, but I'm not going to give that responsibility over and say, I have, don't have the right to answer my constituents. I just I think we're right going to the I don't think it's that either, but, you know, it I'll can definitely be rewarded. When all board members receive an email, the board chair will reply, include the superintendent on the thread, and from the constituent that the superintendent will respond. I mean, it says right there, we're going to inform the constituent. I mean, it, it literally says that we're going to reply. Does it not? Well, it says we're going to tell them that, that we're sending the superintendent, and he'll tell them. <clears throat> Words, so what would the harm be in just striking that last bullet point? Yeah. Well, to me, the point of it is, you guys came up with it, but to me, the point of it is, um, if we all get copied on the same, I think it's a matter of efficiency and professionalism for us not to each, to get nine responses back to, to one person. Now, of course, there are times that it's very obvious that it went to everybody, and there are other times that they sent you one, they sent you one, you know, it's the same message. They're trying to get that. We can't. And we don't know. We can't overcome that. We can't, that. We can't we'll get nine different responses. We'll get nine different responses, which is, we which is fine. So, so could, it, could it just be as simple as we're all copied? Because I, I, I mean, if we're all copied, I think this is the proper way to go about it. The whole purpose was to improve the efficiency and make sure that we were communicating in a timely and effective manner. It wasn't meant to be a slight. It wasn't meant to be, we don't want you talking to your constituents. That wasn't the purpose. When it was very positive and we voted on it eight to nothing that we were, <laughs> during the meeting, we all voted for it. It wasn't meant to be a negative. It wasn't meant to be, we're taking this piece away from you. It was meant to improve the efficiencies well, of the communicate. I'm just saying, again. I don't see where it says you can't talk well, to your you know, constituents. The, the part about efficiency, okay, um, efficient for who? It's efficient for the school board members that just have one person responding. Efficient for okay. the constituent, too, because but, they're going to get an immediate response. But again, I go back to, well, I, Respond to mine. They weren't but, getting an immediate response during COVID because I was, I was getting returning emails and phone calls for fifteen hours one day, and what, I was told all over the county, Miss Kelly, you're the only one responding to us. Well, that's so, not true because I responded. I was going to say you, you believe everything you, in here. <laughs> <laughs> you did too, but I've been told all over the weekend too. You told me that a year ago. I said, tell me who I didn't respond to. Do you think I still have those emails? <laughs> okay. Well, here, here's. Here's the other thing too that I have a concern about is some of our folks don't know who their rep is. They just know there's a school board. So they send them the message to everybody. We don't know unless we look at the voter list if they're in our district. Right. But I intend to respond to everybody in my district. And actually, if anybody sends me an email, I'm gonna do that too. That's fine. If somebody if somebody needs help, I'm gonna help. Well, I think and I think too, um, just remembering what uh, Maybe right out of my head, but a trainer from GSBA said, you know, it, it goes back to the 
I don't think there's anything in here that go that's much different from what's in your code of conduct or our policies. Yes, I'll look that up. There's nothing in the code of conduct. And then and our policies and, and goes back to the, the idea too that you know board of education, single members, while they have a duty to their constituents, the powers in the board as a whole and not as single people. Um, you know, that type of thing. And I think that is where some of this gets tied up into also. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and again, disputed that, but in the code of conduct that you told me it was in there, and what I heard, and the and the code of conduct where you told me it was actually in there about the phone calls, I actually finally found it. I don't think it's directly it. about the about you told the me phone you're calls. Give it to me before this meeting, and I didn't get it, and it's not in the code of conduct. Pull up the code of conduct. Mm -hmm. What harm would it be in just taking out that last bullet? I'm, I'm a little bit more concerned about the fact that Beverly wasn't here. And what happened during that day was not bad. And clearly something I lost in translation. got lost in translation yeah. with her. Because it was because it was not positive. Yeah. And when you were there, you agreed. To you it, agreed. Right? Yeah. And now you don't agree, which makes I didn't me agree great. with it then. I just well, you didn't say that. you didn't agree with oh, it. Oh, yes, I did. Mm, yes, <laughs> ma'am. We'll go back and look at that case. Um, because I didn't agree with it then, and I don't agree with it now because I don't think it needs to be in there because <laughs> there's it says what it says. And we voted on it eight to nothing. So, well, why did you vote in a closed session of the board in the first place? Yeah, I don't place. understand that. That <laughs> broke the sunshine laws. Okay, let's okay. change the term vote. Okay. We yeah. all raised we, our yeah. hand. And <laughs> to be, also be very clear, it wasn't a closed it session. Was, it was, it was, was. Was. I train. went back and played to the picture of the uh, thing that you told me was a post of meeting. It wasn't a post of meeting. You took a snapshot where we posted meeting. It's posted right here. You can pull it up right now and look at it. It wasn't posted. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid you're mistaken. The, the work session was posted, but it wasn't. It was a training session, but it wasn't posted. He's got a picture. So it's probably in the record. But it wasn't posted. It's not in the record. Yeah, I think that's what you're going to have, have to do. And take it the way it is. Well, it's going to have to be voted. Again, what what harm could it do to just not have that in there? That last bullet. I don't know what harm it is to have in there. Yeah, I just hate well, that. I think so Beverly was was made to be upset about that because it was just unnecessary. The, the problem, I mean, I, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm kind of neutral on the bullet. The reason I don't want to delete the bullet is because we went through a process. There are eight, you know, there were eight people here. I mean, like if we don't, if if we don't do it that way, I don't know. I think we need to hold ourselves to a to a standard of the process that we went through. That we agreed to it. We worked on it as a team. We, I, I mean, that's in my. I don't. I don't think. Exactly. I, it is my opinion. You said you're not going to abide by it. I, I don't. I don't think it's a conflict with what you want to do. I don't either. I you, think you you're, I think you're within your right to do exactly what you're saying. I, I think you're I, well I, I mean, right. I think it 100 percent would be. I think it's. Right. I think and I it's, hate that you were made to feel that way. I really do. Uh, I really do. I think it's awesome that that you know that we can respond and and pick up the phone and call people and reply via email. And I think you probably are one of the best of us at doing so. And I encourage you to keep doing it. So. I agree. I, I don't. Um, I don't have any issue with it. Nothing divisive, no. underhanded. We, we did it in a. We did it to try to make things more consistent and efficient. You want to just pull this out of the consent agenda and have to vote on it at the next meeting? That would be good. Everybody, good with that? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Offer the authorization for committees to meet. We talked about the Clean School Teacher of the Year. Uh, May 4th, we'll have our final uh, Teacher of the Year review. That'll be exciting. Um, 
We're moving to an executive session to discuss or deliberate upon the appointment, employment, compensation, hiring, disciplinary action, or dismissal, or periodic evaluation or rating of a public officer or employee, or to interview applicants for the position of superintendent. Um, yes. 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 